Welcome to Summerside Community Church. We are streaming live uh, from Center 150 located here in Summerside, Prince Edward Island. And if you want to learn more about the ministries of Summerside Community Church, please head to our website at summersidecommunity.church. Our website is always updated and has the current information that you need to know. And so this morning, we are both in person here at Center 150 and online on Facebook. And it is a different kind of morning, and we've done a lot of pivoting and had to change things up a number of times as we prepared for this morning with the announcements that happened yesterday. So we are open here at the center for 50 people, but most people have made the decision to stay home and to join us online. And you know, it really does show the value of us being able to stream our uh, Sunday mornings online. And so just a huge thank you to our teams that help us with that. And this morning, due to the number of contact sites and contact tracing, last night, late last night, uh, we knew that we did not have a full worship team. And so we made the decision not to have live worship this morning. So we are going to be playing a worship set from an earlier service this year. And it's a really good one. And it's really timely for what we're walking through today. So I'm excited to be able to experience that with you this morning. And then Andrew Bryce will be speaking here this morning live, and he's digging deeper into the topic of forgiveness, which is so key during the season of Lent as we prepare our hearts for Easter and for what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so uh, he's going to be speaking on forgiveness this morning as well. Uh, online, on Facebook, I just want to encourage you to interact with us, share your comments on live feed, uh, and we look forward to interacting with you in that way. And just want to encourage you to stay connected. I know at this time when things are disconnected like this, it can feel very disconnected. So we want to stay in touch with you on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and our weekly email that comes out on Thursdays. So we want to stay in the loop with you. So this morning, with all of the, the pivoting and the movement that has happened, I just want to take a moment just for thankfulness. Uh, when there's just so much going on, it's important just to stop and think about what am I thankful for and pause and reflect on that. And so uh, in the live feed this morning, I just want to encourage you just to type in something you're thankful for. And if you're here in house, think about, you know, what am I thankful for this morning with all that's happened recently? And... I just want to share, I'm just so thankful for Colby Lidstone, who is our youth pastor, um, pastor of many things, he <laughs> calls himself, um, and he, I texted him late last night, actually it was like midnight, I'm like, are you still awake? With all of the changes that I knew that would be happening this morning, and he was just so positive and willing to adjust and flex and help us get the service happening this morning uh, with a small team. And so he has a small team with him this morning. He has Parker and Greg and Kim. So if we can just give them our love. So online, you can hit that love button in-house. If we want to like shake, we can clap our hands in-house and just say thank you. Thank you to this team for bringing this live and making this happen this morning. I just so appreciate the work that they've done this morning. We were here early getting things going and everything, praise God, everything just worked so smoothly. Like it just, no hiccups. And so we're so thankful for that. So thank you, God. Um, so this time, in this time of worship this morning, we just really want to take this space and this time, both online and in-house, um, just to really be present with God. We've got the space and this time uh, to learn, to be equipped, and to receive and experience God's transformational presence and power. And so even though we might be separate, 
the Holy Spirit is not limited by walls and by the fact that we're not all together. And so he is at work. And so we want to just be present to him this morning. And families at home, we encourage you to find creative uh, and engaging ways for everyone in the house to connect with God. So I just want to pray right now over, over our time and over the homes uh, that are watching. So right now, uh, God, I just pray that you just bless our families at home and our parents with creativity and your presence to turn eyes and hearts towards you. Fill our homes and fill this space with your peace, Holy Spirit. We know that you are not limited by distance, and you are among us, and you draw our hearts together. And Father, um, last week, um, when Moira was worshiping, she talked about speaking to our souls. And so this morning, just like David in the Psalms, we speak to our souls and we say, wake up, souls. Uh, and we say, why are you downtrodden? Why are you depressed if you're feeling that way in your soul? And we say, hope in God's soul. Hope in God. Praise him. He is my salvation. He is my God. Awake my soul. As we come into worship, we just ask you, God, to awake our souls and draw our hearts together this morning in worship. And so we are going to turn now to Heather and her team and enjoy this time of worship, and I will see you after worship.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, yeah. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, I fight.
for your presence here this morning, Lord. What an awesome God you are. We pour out our hearts to you this morning, Lord. Give you all the worship that's due your name. the sun. 
Jesus, the Son of God. Turning to the secret place, just an altar and a flame. Love is found here in our sacred space. I hear your voice, I see your grace. You're still my. There's a table 
just for you and me. Break the bread and pour the wine. Perfect union, nothing in between. I am yours and you
this morning, I just feel like declaring, no matter what happens, God is still God. Nothing can change that. Not our decisions, not our circumstances, not our sins, this pandemic, the unrest we might feel in our souls. Nothing changes who God is. And he has so much more for you. His ways are not your ways. And so God, this morning, just help us to slow down. We know we have an enemy that would choose and want to create chaos and noise. And so this morning I say, peace, be still. Peace, be still. God, we want to hear you speak to us. We want to hear you say, do not fear. I love you. Just like we sang in the song, God, I love you. He says, I love you. And we say, I love you back. He says, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. I love you, my child. And my love is enough. Trust me. Get close to me and I'll show you mysteries and delights that are like nothing else. I know you better than you know yourself. I am enough. God says, I am enough. Don't look to man in his ways. Look to me. Look to God. He says, I am enough. All we need to do is believe even just a little bit. He said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And so, God, we say, I believe you are enough. So this morning, I just want us to say that together. I want to do something a little different. I want us to declare together and online in our home churches and if you're even on your own with your family, I'll encourage you to do this or type this into the live feed. So let's say this together. We're going to say, I believe God that you are enough. All right, let's do this together. I believe God that you are enough. Amen. Man, God, you are enough. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity and this time to remember that you are enough. Um, you know, this morning I was just reflecting in worship how we have to be just so open to do church differently and to think about, you know, why do we do church? Why do we come together? We come together to worship him, to give God the glory and the honor for who he is. And there's different elements in which we can do that. And so worship is definitely one. And Andrew's going to come up and share our message with us this morning. And so we come together to be equipped to learn and to worship and to give God the glory. And so uh, I'm very excited. Andrew's digging in further to the topic of forgiveness. And so um, I just want to pray for him before we get started. Uh, so, God, I just thank you for uh, my brother Andrew, and I just thank you, Father, for this message that you have laid on his heart. And I just pray, Father, that you would just, through your Holy Spirit, you've been preparing our hearts all morning through worship, Father. And we just pray that the word that you want us to take today, that that would just be clear to our spirits. And, Father, that we would have the ability to take that in and to walk that out. I pray, Father, that you would just give Andrew the peace that he needs to share this and this, the courage and um, just the words, Father, just to flow from deep within and into our hearts. And so we just thank you, God, what, for what you're going to do this morning. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory because you're the one that does it. In Jesus' name, amen. And all those of you uh, infectious cheerleaders who showed up this morning, God bless you all, and uh, so good to see you. And those of you at home, uh, we, we certainly understand why you've stayed home. There's a number of churches who canceled this morning, and we didn't know what to do, and uh, it's, it's just for the few that are here, we decided to press on um, and uh, continue. Um, you know, 
Bob Dylan wrote a song um, in 1964 uh, that I think is, um, is typical of, of the days that we're in right now. Um, it's called The Times They Are A-Changin'. And Dylan wrote this song as the deliberate attempt to create an anthem of change uh, for the time. And even though it was written uh, more than 55 years ago, it couldn't be more relevant today. Here we are, the last day of February, um, with um, you know empty churches uh, across our city. Um, all 14 to 29-year-olds have been told to get tested for COVID-19. You know, these are unusual days that we're in. And uh, some of the lyrics go like this. Come writers and critics who prophesy with the pen and keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again. As Dylan's song continues, the battle outside raging will soon shake your windows and rattle your walls. And there's a, a it's, it's like there's this new wave of fear that's uh, come over our province. And these COVID changes have been creating an angst and even an anger uh, among everyone. And that's why two weeks from uh, this afternoon, we're gonna be having a grief course uh, from two till five, where five people from our church are going to be uh, sharing on the effects of grief, and, and certainly our culture is going through a pile of grief right now um, as a result of being in this kind of lockdown stage for almost a year now. And then two week, uh, three weeks, pardon me, from today, uh, at seven o'clock, we're gonna be having a directional meeting uh, for the whole congregation where the elders have been making some plans about our future. And so that's three weeks from tonight. So two weeks uh, from today, a session on grief, and three weeks from tonight, a session on the directional changes of our church. I want to do a recap from uh, last week. Um, we've uh, been playing leftovers this morning that, that worship, no matter what kind of leftovers, uh, I just I entered in, and I'm, I'm hoping that you did too, were able to enter into that worship. We had people flagging this morning. We had people standing and raising their arms. And um, we're hoping that you at home could be entering in. If, if you did, why don't you send up some love emojis right now? We love those love emojis from home. And um, we want to take some leftovers from last week's very rich meal that Tracy gave us on forgiveness. And I've taken some of the slides that she used and added some of my own, because uh, le lef leftovers uh, have fewer pots and pans to clean up, and often they taste better. Um, and so um, forgiveness, the way of the cross, um, and look at this from a different angle. Last week, uh, Tracy said these words, in our world today, there is a much larger pandemic than COVID and its anger and hatred. And uh, this is anything but glorious freedom. Our culture is taking justice and judgment into its own hands, but without God's wisdom. We really do need a reboot. Our whole culture needs a reboot. Our whole world needs to take, um, make a chance to make things right. And Jesus has provided that opportunity. You know, there's two things that happen um, when we get saved, uh, justification and sanctification. I wanna unpack those two words just a little bit. Justification is where your spirit and your soul get transformed immediately and they get taken to a new place uh, where everything gets born again. But sanctification, when your spirit and your soul get saved, is when the process of your soul changing takes place. 
And that's the, that's the beginning of your journey. Not everything gets uh, cleaned up at the cross. Yes, uh, you're born again. Your spirit gets born again. You're, you're, you're made in a perfect right relationship with Jesus. But your soul, which is your mind, your will, and emotions, uh, needs to go through um, the car wash over and over and over again. It needs to be bathed over and over and over again. And there's issues from your past that need to be taken to the cross. And that's the process of being sanctified or the process of your soul being made right with uh, Jesus. In order to do that, we need to stay in a constant place of repentance. It's the antidote or the vaccine for unforgiveness. One of our church members sent a picture of all the cars lined up at Slemon Park who are going for their COVID test this morning. And it's literally miles long. And the, the antidote for unforgiveness is constant repentance. Staying in a place where our hearts are saying, Lord, show me my sin. It's easy for us to look at the sin of other people. And Jesus says that's like trying to take um, a, a speck out of somebody's eye when there's a beam coming out of yours. And we can, we're the only ones who can take the beam out of our eyes. And that comes from the antidote of unforgiveness, which is repentance. I can only resolve to work on my own stuff. And I've been constantly doing that since the beginning of my walk with Jesus. In fact, David had to come to that place. Here's this warrior, this, um, the, the guy who wrote all the, the psalms, or most of the psalms of the scriptures, uh, who uh, was a king and um, who defiled his best friend and his best friend's wife. And the entire Psalm 51 is create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a, a steadfast spirit within me. David was crying out to God, and, um, and he and Bathsheba lost um, their son, which was an illegitimate uh, son. Uh, conceived um, out of an adulterous relationship. And then uh, out of that repentance, Solomon was born. Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon, who became the next king following David. So even David, a man after God's own heart, knew, knew that he needed to live in this state of constant repentance. One thing that really impacts our hearts, that can put us in a pit, that can hurt our relationship with God, is a lack of repentance. It's to think that I've, I've, I've got everything taken care of, I'm, I'm good now, and I, I don't need to work on, on my own relationship with God. Um, the Lord has created us, and I was trying to think of an, an illustration I don't know if you know what an eye bolt is, but it's it's got these screws in it, and then it's got a big um, hole in it. He's he's created us with this eye bolt that has gone into our hearts, and that eye bolt is supposed to have the latch of the Holy Spirit. But what happens when we sin is there's this latch that the enemy puts in that eye bolt, and then it, it pulls us in the direction of our flesh and pulls us in the direction of more sin. And the only thing that can release that hook from that eye bolt that's in our heart is repentance. And when we repent, we get forgiven, and the, the hook 
that gets put in our heart, in that eye bolt, gets released. That's the way we, when we're born again, the, the hook that got put in our heart, in that eye bolt, gets released. And then the way we keep that, that hook out from reattaching itself is to hold on to this attitude of repentance. John the Baptist uh, preached a baptism of repentance. He said, you know, there's one greater than me who's coming, whose sandals I, I'm not worthy to untie. Uh, but you, in order to be ready for him, you need to repent. And the Apostle Peter said uh, in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost, you, you need to repent of your sins and then be baptized uh, in order to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that will keep you unhooked from sin. So repentance, whether it was for John's baptism or for Jesus' baptism, repentance is a part of the whole package. Here's another slide I want you to look at. Without exposure, there cannot be any healing. Without exposure to your sin and to your need for repentance, there can't be any healing. Um, I, I watched a, a wonderful uh, podcast by William Paul Young, who for three months was having an adulterous affair with his wife's um, best friend. And he made that statement when he got caught, without exposure, there can be no healing. And if you leave your secrets in the dark, you will not have the full healing that Jesus has for you. I love this scripture from 1 Peter uh, chapter 2. Verse 9, but you are not like that, for you're a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Do you know that we are called priests? The priesthood of all believers is right here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and before you die, you need to find a priest. You need to find another Christian that you can share your deepest, darkest sins with. It doesn't need to be uh, a priest priest who's been ordained. It doesn't have to be an, uh, a pastor. It needs to be another Christian that you can trust a person that, and and you know what? I, I think we need many priests in our life. When we move to a new community, we need, um, we need to find another priest, uh, another really good friend, another believer. A priest is a believer in Christ. That's what 1 Peter 2, 9 says. We need to find people that we can confess our sin to. The Bible says, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. And if, if you're sick, call the elders of the church so that they can anoint you with oil. And if you have sinned, confess your sins. You know, confession is, is such a good thing. It's, it's, it's like walking in the light. It's such a good thing. And exposure can only come through repentance. So I have a question for you this morning. Who is your priest? Right now, who's the person that you go to to confess things to? I'm just going to pause for a moment let you think on that. When we don't stand a place of repentance and let those hidden spaces heal our hearts, we're going to find it really hard to forgive. 
and there won't be any healing. We'll find it hard to go deeper with God. We'll struggle um, with those things that become addictions. It could be anger. It could be work. It could be sexual addiction. It could be food addiction. It could be alcohol or drugs. Unhealthy ties to people or family, even physical illness. Do you know that our bodies actually speak to us about the illnesses that we're going through? Sometimes certain foods will tell us that they don't agree with what we need to eat. They aren't the problem. They're symptoms of either the body, the soul, or the spirit. We are triune beings, body, soul, and spirit. And when any of those things gets out of whack, we get into the trouble. And repentance leads us to forgiveness. Secrets aren't meant to be carried to your grave. As a pastor, I've heard many people's secrets. And I always respect people more when they share their secrets with me than I did before. Because they're owning their own weaknesses and in our weaknesses, we're made strong. And I try to share my weaknesses with, with my church family because I know that it's out of my weaknesses. You know, even this morning, I, when somebody asked me how I was doing, I said, oh, I'm just doing okay. And uh, that I, what I was doing was I was sharing my weakness, and this sister prayed for me. And... I, I feel, when I shared that, I feel stronger right now, leaning into the Lord, not stronger in myself, but stronger in the Lord, because I admitted and owned where I was at. Are you carrying unforgiveness today that you aren't meant to carry? As Christians, we need to look at repentance from a spiritual place. Your soul, your mind and your will and your emotions doesn't have the capacity to completely forgive. Your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, must submit to your spirit, which is that place of communion with God. It's that place of conscience. When God is speaking to your conscience, that place of communion with God, that place where Wisdom dwells. That's your spirit. And your soul must submit to your spirit. And so when you don't feel like doing something, that's your, your emotions, your soul must submit to your spirit, man, your conscience, your communion, and your, the wisdom place of your heart. And repent. Your soul needs to repent to your spirit man because your spirit man has been born again. Our spirit, our soul is the total embodiment of our personality, our traumas, our hurts, our upbringing, our beliefs, our uniqueness that makes up who you are. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And our spirit response is your conscience, your communion with God, and where his wisdom inhabits. Your spirit man is what immediately gets justified, as I said earlier, and born again. But your soulish man is that part of you that must grow into Christ's likeness as it submits to your spirit. You know, I want to tell you a story, um, and this happened about 33 years ago. It's a, it's a true story, and um, there was a, a small group of people who um, took offense at um, 
that something that I I believed that I'd I'd come to to believe and and I I preached it, and so uh, actually six families ended up leaving this church that I used to pastor, and um, they started a new church in town, and it hurt. Um, those of us who left behind badly, they were hurt um, badly. Uh, it was it was division. Uh, it wasn't good. And um, and I was really upset. I was really mad. Um, and the 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 other church was here in in Summerside, and it was. Um, down on Water Street, you know where the Lafergy subdivision is, where the lights are? They, uh, they bought that building. It's now owned by an architect, but at that time they bought that building. And, um, and for two years, there was this, I, I would drive by that building, and I, 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 I had unforgiveness in my heart towards this group of people. And I wanted them to be miserable, and I wanted them to be to fail. I I I just I wanted them to be miserable, and I wanted them to fail. And um, there was this this about five foot tree that I I actually um, this is how poisonous it got in my heart. I thought I'm going to cut that tree down and use it for a Christmas tree. That's how bad it got. And the next year I was driving by and it was six feet high and I thought now it's the perfect size for a Christmas tree and I'm gonna cut down that tree and use it for a Christmas tree. That's, that's just wrong, that's just wrong. And I knew it was wrong. So I asked the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to pray for these people? This is, I know that this is affecting my heart. This isn't right. And he said, I, and I was so surprised by what, that I, you know, I thought this is, so often we think the Lord's going to agree with us and how we're feeling. That's how our soul can deceive us. And he said, I want you to pray for their joy and their success. The two opposite things that I wanted in my soul. My spirit man was speaking to me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and in my spirit, man, he told me how he wanted me to pray for them, for their joy and their success. Well, it took me a number of months to, to own that. I, I thought for sure I wasn't hearing from God at first. And the more I prayed, the more I realized it, it really was God speaking. And I started to pray for their joy and their success. And, and then I was driving by one day, and he said, and now I want you to pray like you mean it. Because obviously I, I wasn't praying like I meant it. And I slowly, my heart, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions got transformed. There was a transaction that my spirit told my soul how to pray, and I obeyed my spirit, and my soul did a 180. And my mind, and my will, and my emotions turned around and literally wanted them to be joyful and to succeed. Colossians 3, and this is a slide Tracy had up last week. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And I loved what Tracy had to say last week. This scripture seems to express that we forgive as 
the Lord forgave us. This is different than forgiving because the Lord forgave us. That concept is covered in other scriptures. But I needed to repent of my attitude, attitude towards the people who left and ask for the Lord's heart towards them as the Lord forgave me. He needed to change my heart through repentance. And when I started to pray for their joy and success, not something that I wanted to do, but as the Lord had forgiven me, all of a sudden things changed. And the more I did it, the easier it became. Colossians 2 this is another scripture that we read last week. When you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. And he's taken it away, nailing it to the, to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. I want to finish with this, um, how the, the, um, the, the, there's a spirit called the Leviathan spirit. And this Leviathan spirit is mentioned a few times in scripture. Um, and the Leviathan spirit um, is a spirit is mentioned in Revelation 19.20. In the physical, he's represented uh, in different ages throughout the period of human existence and in different kingdoms. The Leviathan spirit is the ultimate spirit of unrepentance that keeps us from forgiving. It's likened to a crocodile or a sea monster or a crooked serpent, a many-headed fire-breathing dragon, a spiritual symbol for demonic power and unrepentance comes from a demonic power it works through the mouth and is empowered by lies accusation criticism fault finding and slander and the attack feels um, it belittles you it marginalizes you and the weight of the words and criticism can just knock you right down. It's a critical spirit. It marks you with wounding so uh, that healing is needed. And we are all capable of cooperating with the Leviathan spirit. I, um, I want to use, uh, go through an exercise now and I'll close with this. Um, to help you identify with perhaps where you have cooperated with the Leviathan spirit and where you need and I need uh, to constantly say, stay in an attitude of repentance. So the fruit of unrepentance is, uh, has a whole bunch of things, but I'm going to read them off and I just want you to... to um, to look at them and to analyze them and to see if there's things here that are in, uh, in your spirit, the fruit of unrepentance. It's um, always being offended. The fruit of, of unrepentance is being jealous and envious of other people. And we can get these sent out uh, if you wish. The fruit of unrepentance is thinking only about yourself and talking about yourself. The fruit of unrepentance is trusting no one. The fruit of unrepentance is always remembering criticism. The fruit of unrepentance is always expecting to be appreciated and always wanting to look good. The fruit of unrepentance is being suspicious. The fruit of unrepentance is looking for faults in others. 
The fruit of unrepentance is getting out of serving if you can, doing as little as possible for others, never forgetting where you have given service. The fruit of unrepentance is sulking if people aren't grateful for you. The fruit of unrepentance is insisting on consideration and respect. The fruit of unrepentance is demanding agreement with your views. The fruit of unrepentance is being selfish at all times, self-preservation and relying on your own strength, and going an, uh, going a alone attitude or doing it by myself, or trouble accepting feedback. What I'd like to do is read this prayer of repentance and break off this spirit of Leviathan that's trying to attach itself to different Christians. It's, it's this hook that's trying to attach in the eye bolt of uh, believers as, as much as unbelievers. And so if you'd like to get into a comfortable position, I just want to close with this prayer. You might want to close your eyes and just... Hold your hands in your lap. In the name of Jesus, I repent for each and every time, knowingly or unknowingly, that I have partnered with Leviathan and the spirit of unforgiveness. I am sorry where I have partnered with accusation, with gossip, with criticism and pride and where I have closed and hardened my heart, Lord. I repent and ask for your forgiveness. And in Jesus' name, I break agreement with Leviathan and all its associated spirits, and I command them to leave me now in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of Leviathan, you need to leave now. I choose to carry a spirit of repentance. In Jesus' name, we break the hold over our lives and family. And in Jesus' name, we loose the fire of God to burn out the roots and claws right now of that devilish spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we unhook and cut off all manipulation accusation, confusion, and twisted communication. We are loosed out of Leviathan and into the arms of Jesus. We wash our wounds clean by the blood of Jesus. We breathe in the Holy Spirit and breathe out all of the toxins. We break every generational access point in Jesus' name, and we cut off the hand trying to reach in through the generational doors in Jesus' name. We are established in a spacious place in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, we loose the healing power of God to kill the power of past accusations. In Jesus' name, we loose healing to our soul and inner man and all effects of Leviathan. We loose the, the healing power of Jesus into the hurts and diminished places of our hearts. We loose the fire of God to burn out all darkness. We loose the redemptive power of Jesus and declare victory. And we are in and one with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I'm going to call on Tracy to close. What a morning. That's great. Um, uh, just, a, just a quick, uh, just a really short recap, and then we're just going to close. But just in worship uh, this morning, we just talked about God, I believe, and I was thinking about um, just that in the Bible, there was a father that Jesus had said to that God can do anything if you believe. And he said, help me in my unbelief. And so this morning, as Andrew talked about forgiveness and 
um, sanctification and just that journey that we walk through. If you're struggling, we can just ask God, help me in my unbelief. Jesus is the real deal. He is the genuine artifact. There is no darkness in him. There's no shadow in him. And believing in him and submitting to him changes us. It really does. I am not the same person because of him. And so we must forgive. We must call out God created me a clean heart. Vulnerability before God and yes, others, as Andrew referred to, confession. My soul must submit and bow to God and bow to where he dwells in me and my spirit. Forgiveness. The more we do it, the easier it becomes. And the easier it is to allow his cleansing and his cleaning. And so it's so good just to be reminded of this fact of forgiveness and continue to watch, walk this journey before him. Even this week, after having spoke about forgiveness, uh, God showed me some more areas that I needed to forgive. And so he does that as a grace to us because it allows us to draw closer to him. And so as Andrew shared earlier too, as a reminder, um, he talked about a grief session. Many of us are walking through grief right now um, with just the life is, there's so much change and there's grief that we walk through. And so March 14th, grief session, you can find that on our website. And then vision meeting, there's a vision meeting. Where are we going? What's the landscape ahead for Summerside Community Church? That's March 21st. So mark those on your calendars and stay in touch with us on our website, summersidecommunity.church, on our Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and just a reminder that the ministries of Summerside Community Church um, don't go ahead without your wonderful gifts. And so if you want to sow into our ministry here, you can do so uh, online through e-transfer or tithely. And in person, there are places to drop off your gifts as well. So thank you for your ongoing support of our ministries here. And I just want to end us with John, 1 John 3.1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. And his great love, he doesn't just love us. He likes to hang out with us. He likes to be with us. He is so delighted in his children. And with that, I just want to say, the Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you. And when it says in scripture, his face shines upon you, it means he's looking. He's looking at you. And be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace as you go into this week. So just carry his peace with you as you go into his week. And so with that, I'm going to sign off for our online family.